at 12. The night beat starts right now. I can wait until hug them and see them and know that they are good. The panicked parents rushing a school parking lot for a reported threat today. Since what happened in New Valley, this could be the new normal. And yet another shooting in Uvalde, a community forced to deal with the fear that it's faced before. The victims involved and the new response to security coming to that community. Plus, health inspectors left several San Antonio businesses with scores in the 80s. But that's not the whole story. The concerns we uncovered behind the kitchen door coming up. But first. The bullets brought back traumatic memories in New Valley, and tonight new information in that shooting there. Four people in custody in connection with that case. And this comes just three days after students return to class in Uvalde CISD, and the mayor's telling us this shooting at Uvalde Memorial Park is gang related. The night team's John Paul Barajas joins us now live from that site. John Paul. Steve Stephania, a source tells us there was actually a physical altercation before that shooting and then the four suspects went to Uvalde Memorial Hospital seeking medical attention. As for the two people who were hit by gunfire, Mayor Don McLaughlin said they were airlifted to San Antonio hospitals in stable condition, but he also spoke to us about the panic in the community as they're still trying to heal from the Rob Elementary shooting. Everybody's going to be on pins and needles, but like I said, we've got plenty of DPS officers at these schools local officers i know this i know the trust is not there but, but we will be there we, we we will not let this community down again uvalde police say the shooting call came in around 5 30 this evening according to a post by uvalde police the victims names have not been released but we know they're juveniles at this time police have not shared any details on the suspects in custody the mayor tells us the rival gangs involved in this shooting have been fighting for the last six to seven months here in uvalde tragedy again you know a gunshot in our park but again, we need the community's help to find these people. The Valley Together Resiliency Center also made a statement today saying that this shooting this evening could be triggering to anyone affected by the Rob Elementary shooting. And they want to remind those people that they have a 24-7 hotline and uh, other resources for anybody impacted and might need uh, some counseling after this traumatic event. We have all that information on our website, ksat.com. In New Valley, John Paul Barajas, KSA, Tub News. Thank you, John Paul. Now, we've seen reactions continue to pour in this evening. One from Archbishop Gustavo Garcia Sierra, who was in New Valley as that community tried to heal from the shooting at Rob Elementary. In a tweet tonight, the Archbishop said in part, quote, guns are not the answer for a healthy society. Gun reform is something that many in Uvalde have called on Governor Greg Abbott to make happen three hours after today's shooting in Uvalde. The governor released a statement focusing on gangs instead. He says he deployed more DPS troopers and directed more patrols around gang hotspots. He says DPS special agents will also target five known gangs operating in Uvalde. And another community tonight shaken to its core over a threat at a high school. Now, typically we don't report on non-credible threats, but the large response at New Braunfels High School is something that we just don't usually see. We saw donations of blood being flown to the campus, but nobody was injured. We want to emphasize that. New Braunfels police say that this is all protocol for dealing with a possible credible threat that has since been deemed non-credible. Now, it's part of the new normal after the Uvalde shooting. And as the night team's Patty Santos shows us, law enforcement not taking these kinds of threats lightly. I think they did a good job with, it's their first, hopefully, first and last time ever doing something like this. Praise from one parent for the response to a threat at New Braunfels High School. A tip on a student hotline mentioned a possible firearm on campus. We had to be searched to go inside to pick your kids up. They searched all the parents, went through your bags, did a full body search. Amber Walters rushed to the school to find her son to find a campus on heightened alert. Elizabeth Stallard says she got the same text, email and school app notification. I just get out from my work and come straight here. New Braunfels police say they went room by room to clear students with the help from multiple law enforcement agencies. The road outside the school was even close to traffic. Hours later, the tip was deemed not credible, but the emotions were still very raw. I just don't think we should be scared to come to school every day. Like, just be afraid to not come back home. We were kind of like jumpy and we like th th thought it was a joke. Emergency responders in the region not taking any threat lightly. 
Even the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center says it was asked to provide blood. I think this is going to be the new normal, so we're, I mean, we weren't complaining if they kept your kids safe. And Steve Stefania, so much relief tonight from the families in New Braunfels. Police say the search is now a shifting to find out who made the call. New Braunfels ISD also says counselors and support staff are going to be available tomorrow for students. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Patty. We're nearing September 11th. The effort to remember the heroes that day will continue with a climb here at the Tower of Americas this year. Last year's ceremony changed because of the pandemic. Registration for the event wrapped up at 10 o'clock tonight. First responders and other participants are known to climb the Tower of Americas twice to pay tribute to those lost on 9-11. And this weekend will mark 21 years since the September 11th attacks. But San Antonio did not wait to pay tribute. The United Way actually partnered with Bear County to host a service day today. More than 400 volunteers put together 1,200 family emergency kits should families ever need them. In other news tonight, tributes continue pouring in for Queen Elizabeth II. Tonight, the Empire State Building in New York City is lit up in purple with a silver sparkle to honor the longest serving monarch in British history. It's one of several memorials happening around the globe tonight. Crowds gathering outside of Windsor Castle as people place flowers along the fencing there. Massive waves of mourners also visited palaces across the UK. Queen Elizabeth II passed away at the age of 96. She was at Balmoral, Balmoral Castle, excuse me, in Scotland, where she had been on summer break, and her family just rushed to be by her side. Now, in 1936, her father became king. She then won public admiration by doing her part during World War II. She actually trained as a truck driver and a mechanic. And at just 25 years old, she then became queen, and she ruled for seven decades. She even took a trip to San Antonio back in 1991, which included a visit to the San Antonio River and the Alamo, and a cypress tree was planted on the Riverwalk in her honor. The owner of Mad Dog's British Pub on the Riverwalk was in London for a work trip when he learned of this news, and he agrees the queen transcended generations. She's also been a, a mother and a grandmother. She's been a statesman. Uh, and, and at the same time, she has been the one who has been able to move forward with the times. Now, the Queen's husband of 73 years, Prince Philip, died April of last year. The Queen's funeral is going to take place after a 10-day period of mourning. But we're going to show you that. You see that? The rainbow which appeared today outside of Buckingham Palace. So immediately now, Prince Charles becomes king. Now for a look at some of the other big headlines in your night beat news flash. Fears over fentanyl are growing. Officers found two people suspected of giving the deadly drug to students and others. One of those suspects just 16 years old. The other suspect 20 year old Anthony Rios. Officers in Hayes County say he had nearly 400 pills laced with fentanyl but looked like Percocet. The death toll among students in Hayes County rose to four today. That's just students in Hayes County. Many others have also died. Surrounding communities are on alert. It's been billed as the largest Martin Luther King Jr. March in the nation, but organizers in San Antonio say the budget needs to be bigger. The march had to be altered the past two years, but now a more traditional event is expected. The commission's budget chair says the stage alone costs about $110,000. Add in some associated events, booking a notable speaker, and organizers say the price tag grows closer to $300,000. And right now, the city's only putting out $100,000 for the event. That could change before a final vote on the city budget, which takes place next Thursday. Now to some construction controversy. City officials in New Braunfels ordered crews to stop building an apartment complex in the small community of Green. They say crews dug beyond what their permit allowed. They now have to work on a new plan with engineers before work can continue. We also have an update on another construction job. This one in the Holotus area near Bandera Road and Bridgepoint. You may remember we've done stories on this. Bear County commissioners actually gave the green light to build a nearly 300 unit apartment complex today. Residents petitioned against it, but commissioners say their hands are tied since all the requirements were met for the property to be built. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. So tonight we're going to take sports on the road. Our Greg Simmons is taking the trip ahead of a special night for a very special spur. 
what he was able to find just one day ahead of Manu's special ceremony. And health inspectors gave them scores in the 80s. Not bad, right? We're going to tell you what that score and these scores are not telling you. We go behind the kitchen door and show you what was found at three separate San Antonio businesses. It's next on the Night Beat. And new tonight, a convenience store with a rodent problem, a Mexican food restaurant where employees weren't washing their hands and a popular fried chicken chain in need of a good cleaning. So here's the thing. All three of those locations scored in the 80s, but still had serious health issues. The night team's Tim Kerber, Gerber now takes us behind the kitchen door. Express Mart number two, located in the 1900 block of Southwest 19th Street, got an 80 on their recent health inspection. The ice machine had a black mold-like debris buildup. There was no hand washing sink because it had been removed. The inspector told the establishment to immediately stop selling pickles and bagging ice on site until the sink was reinstalled. Another sink had dark mold-like debris and several flies buzzing around it. Rodent droppings were observed inside a walk-in cooler. The inspector ordered the business to clean up the droppings, remove damaged bags, and provide access to a locked back room. A reinspection was ordered. Aradero, a Mexican restaurant in the 5800 block of South Flores, earned an 82. The inspector didn't see any employees there wash their hands during the inspection. One employee was observed grabbing cooked bacon and placing it on a plate without washing hands or using gloves. A metal rack used to store clean plates was soiled with dust and rust. Seven violations were corrected during the inspection, but a reinspection was still ordered because several certifications needed to be obtained or renewed. The church's fried chicken at the corner of Culebra and Galm earned an 84. Packages of raw chicken were being improperly thawed in a standing bin of water. The inspector watched an employee change tasks, remove dirty gloves, and put on clean gloves without washing their hands. Vent filters over the fryers were coated with excessive accumulations of grease and food debris. Employees had no idea when those filters were last changed. There was also a lot of trash and food debris throughout the business that needed to be cleaned up. A reinspection was ordered. That's what's behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Okay, let's focus on the other part, right? The part that's not so bad. You can also check out the businesses with great scores. So here's what you do. You scan this QR code with your phone's camera and it's gonna take you to a mapping tool that shows you all the scores for local businesses. And it's updated quite frequently and goes back as long as six months, so. That one place that was ordered not to sell pickles, Kind of a big deal. Oh, you love it. KSAT community getting ready for a yearly tradition. I love this as well. Registration open for the ninth annual Head for the Cure. The 5K run and walk raises awareness and funds to fight brain cancer. And it's something that's very near and dear to those of us at KSAT. Our former news director, Jim Boyle, diagnosed with glioblastoma and passed away. But this is part of his legacy that lives on. His daughter helped kick off this event outside KSAT Studios in 2014. Since then, it's grown with more families running for the survivors and in remembrance of their loved ones lost. This year, it all kicks off on September 24th. You can register right now on KSAT.com. Use the promo KSAT to get $5 off registration. Hope to see you there. Yeah, now let's take a live look outside. Here's Sky 12 over the downtown area. You're looking at there. 83 degrees and it's a very exciting day for meteorologist Adam Kasky. He's been celebrating because all right, so we had rain for a bit and now we're getting an idea as to how much of a dent that made in our drought situation. Exactly. That's a nice thing. And I'm mean, excited thermometer Thursday, of course. So that's a couple true. of things yes. to be excited about. Both big deals. Oh, gosh. <laughs> he loves it. You're so sweet. <laughs> hey, you're relishing that, that was one. Terrible. I don't even want to be a part of this. Okay, well, let's take a look at our drought monitor three weeks ago. This is not the new one. Okay, this is three weeks ago, but get ready for this. Three, two, one. Boom, look how we really erased a lot of the extreme and exceptional drought across our area. Yes, there's still work to be done. I know we still have 
drought in our area, but we've really put a big dent in it over the past really four weeks or so. So it's good to see this improvement as a whole across Texas. 62% of the state considered in drought. That's a big improvement over the past three weeks alone. The two worst drought categories have dropped about 25% each. So that's really good to see that not as much red and maroon on the map right now and actually not even drought in parts of North Texas, East Texas, far deep South Texas and West Texas. It's nice to see some elimination of the drought in parts of the Lone Star State. Uh, showers generally closer to the Gulf Co Coastline today. We had a couple of them pop up in and around parts of San Antonio briefly earlier today. We still are on the backside of this upper level low, this counterclockwise circulation aloft. It's just sitting over New Orleans and the good energy and moisture is out ahead of it moving through Florida and parts of the southeast. But on the backside, every so often we'll get a little hit of upper level energy, and that could be enough to kickstart one or two showers again tomorrow afternoon. But kind of like today, generally we're looking dry, just a few little surprise ones here and there. We also have Tropical Storm K made landfall as a Category 1 hurricane in the western coast here of the Baja Peninsula, the Horn right there. And now it's a tropical storm. It's going to be brushing right along the coastline, bringing more flooding rain to the Baja Peninsula, staying offshore, the center of circulation from now on. But over the next several days, I mean, through the weekend, it's going to be bringing that flooding rain and also rainfall to the desert of Southern California. Not completely unheard of for them, but definitely a unique situation where they average, you know, Palm Springs averages about four to four and a half inches of rain a year, and they could get that in a few days. Hurricane Earl near Bermuda right now, Cat 1 could become a Cat 3 as it passes Bermuda, then a 70% chance of development way out in the Atlantic, and then another 30%. So just a few things to watch, but overall still a fairly quiet year. And by the way, peak hurricane season is September 10th. That's just right around the corner on Saturday. 94. That was our high today. Two degrees above average. The record high, 101. 82 right now at the dew point is 63. We're 84 in Hondo, 77 in Kerrville, 83 Port SA in Seguin, and even 78. Here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. 8 a.m. We're talking 75 degrees at noon, right near 90. Then a high temperature of 95. So that'll put us anywhere from about 92 in Comfort, 91 Bulverde to 94 in Poteet. And then Saturday through next week, Pretty much the same. Sunny, mid 90s. All right. All right. Very Thank consistent. Mm -hmm. All right. Now we're going to head on north. We're going to go to Springfield, <laughs> way Massachusetts. North. Yeah, yeah way, way north of here to speak with our friend Greg Simmons. All right. So you're in Springfield, Massachusetts for a very special ceremony. Tell us what's up. Well, you know what? We're very excited for Manu Ginobili because this time Saturday night, he'll be officially a member of the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. In fact, that's Dr. Naismith sitting right behind me. When we come back, who is going to actually award him his Hall of Fame jacket? We'll actually reveal that for you tonight. And is Dak Prescott injured before their season opener? you got to be kidding me. <laughs> Coming up. Good evening, everybody, and welcome live to Springfield, Massachusetts, where we begin our coverage of Manu Ginobili's induction into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. Officials' duties don't begin tomorrow. The induction ceremony is on Saturday, and what a night that will be for Manu, his wife, Monty, his three sons, of course, Dante, Nico, and Luca, and as he's been given the most prestigious award in all of pro basketball. In fact, the boys will present their father with his Hall of Fame jacket tomorrow night. And take a look at this. He already has a display in the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame. We found out today near the Admiral David Robinson, little known player from Argentina, who's a second round pick in 1999, spent three seasons overseas before moving to San Antonio, became a smash hit for his passion on the court and his ability, by the way, to also speak fluent Spanish, which is arguably the most popular spur in team history. Ginobili, by the way, was asked what it's like to be the forefather of the now stream of international players who suit up in the NBA. He, he was a, a span, I would say, five to ten years in which everything changed when we started to see international players in number one in the draft or top ten consistently. And all of a sudden, in those five years, 20 to 25 percent of the rosters were made, built with, with international players. So, yeah, I'm proud of being part of that generation that changed the way the game was played, the game was perceived, uh, the international players were recognized. Um, 
So it was it was fun to be part of that. Manu, by the way, a part of a press conference with his other classmates of 2022, including former Spurs player George Carl, who's going in for his coaching legacy. Week three of Big Game Coverage begins tonight with a brand new tradition in the Judson Independent School District, Operation Dog Tags. <laughs> Tonight's the U.S. Army's parachuting team dropping in on Rutledge Stadium tonight to present the colors. Wagner hosting Sam Marcus is part of a new tradition in the Judson Independent School District to honor all who have served their country. First quarter, second play of the game. In fact, the pitch goes to T-Birds. Jawan Bay Taylor in the program. He's listed as an athlete. You can see why as he breaks free down the sideline for the 40-yard touchdown. And Wagner has to go to overtime to win this one, 42 to 41. The 0-2 Reagan Rattlers looking for their first win of the season against the 11th-ranked Clark Cougars over at Ferris Stadium. Second quarter, Reagan down 3-0. Quarterback Caleb Cupiccio finds Luke Sasser wide open in the end zone for the 16-yard pitch and catch. 7-3 Reagan. Rattlers increase their lead just before the half. Running back Carson Green slithers his way in for the three-yard touchdown. 14-3 Reagan at the half. Final from Ferris, 35-10 Reagan. Over at Gustafson Stadium, the Warren Warriors in total control. Second quarter up 35-0 over Holmes and quarterback Antonio Mia is able to find Darian Holmes for the 68-yard touchdown to make it 42-0. The final from Gus, 63-0 Warren. The Randolph Rohawk cheerleaders have plenty to cheer for as they were up 17 to nothing in third over YMLA. We, we arrive at the SAISD Sports Complex. Randolph showing no signs of slowing down. Quarterback Colin Stuckey buys time with his feet then fires to Gabe Gonzalez to get the Rohawks inside the YMLA 20-yard line a few plays later. Quarterback sneak for Stuckey as they take a 24 to nothing lead. The final from the Sports Complex, 45 to nothing. Randolph, District 14, 5A Division 2 matchup at the Rock Pile. Jefferson taking on Sam Houston. Mustangs ball. Handout goes to Adrian Garces and he is muscles his way over the goal line for the one-yard touchdown, 7-0 Jefferson, but the Hurricanes answer right away back at the next drive. Albert Goodlow finds Tristan White for the 11-yard touchdown. We're all tied at 7. Let's head to the big game coverage scoreboard for that final. Jefferson falls to Sam Houston, 40-21, to and this was a good one. This game had to be moved up to Thursday night. Bernie over Antonian, 45-34. Dak Prescott has to leave practice early today. We'll tell you why next. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Dak Prescott had to leave practice early today, just two days before their season open against Tampa Bay. That's after his report it tweaked his surgically repaired ankle as he was trying out some new cleats. But Prescott tells us it's nothing to worry about. He'll be ready to go Sunday night against Tampa Bay. Honestly, I feel great. Uh, something may come up uh, in the report, but uh, <laughs> as you know, that's this league, and if you don't report a hangnail, you'll get suspended or you'll ups or they'll get fined. Excuse me. So, um, but no, I feel great. Uh, I still feel the best th uh, that I felt in a very, very long time. Not even comparable to where I was last year going into this game. So, uh, honestly, just excited, ready, ready for uh, Sunday to get there. All right, we'll see on Sunday, and we're so excited for Manu and his family. Everybody's going to be here, Pop, David Robinson, Tony Parker, Fabricio, and we're looking forward to that Hall of Fame jacket award ceremony tomorrow from his three sons, and then, of course, the acceptance speech on Saturday. Live in Springfield, Massachusetts, Greg Simmons, KSN 12 Sports. I love that his three sons are giving him his Hall of Fame jacket. That's, yeah. that's so appropriate. Pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. Good and we'll be right back after this. Okay, so here's something really cool for you to check out. One of San Antonio's historic mansions is going to host a festival dedicated to the paranormal. The Black Swan Inn is going to welcome psychics, vendors, and paranormal professionals, and people who've had their own encounters with ghosts. It's happening on September 17th, and we have all the details for this paranormal party of sorts right now on KSET.com. Very interesting. Will you be there? I, I find, I mean... I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> All right, so here's a look at where we got some rain today. You can see a little bit on the west side and the south side of San Antonio tomorrow, just as isolated, basically, then yep. dry. There'd be some good forecasters in that crowd. Ooh. Just saying. That does it for us. Good morning, San Antonio starts at 430. Good night.